Hidden within the Phineas map of 1531 is a cartographic translation that may just be the proof that an ancient civilization has mapped the Earth in the distant past. If you watched the previous short video, this is the mathematical test of that theory. The theory revolves around a very simple question. Is the southern continent of Phineas's ancient map Antarctica? I believe it is, and a geospatial prediction can be made to test this theory. The video is broken into three parts. A general overview of the theory and the significance, a more formulated technical hypothesis by a cartographic researcher, and finally, my geospatial test of the hypothesis and making a falsifiable prediction of the claim surrounding this remarkable map. Since Antarctica was not discovered for over 200 years after the map's publication, it follows that the only way the map could have been drawn was if Phineas had access to an accurate source map of Antarctica from an unknown or at least unrecognised civilization. Secondly, since no method was available to measure longitude accurately in 1530, if the map is longitudinally accurate, it follows the civilization that mapped Antarctica had some level of sophisticated technology and mathematics. Thirdly, and most importantly, if this map is a map of Antarctica, then the coast is shown ice-free. For example, the area of the Phineas map that is presumed to be the Ross Ice Shelf is now covered in sea ice. The only way it could be mapped today is by aerial ice penetrating radar. This indicates that if it is a map of Antarctica, then it was mapped when the climate was much warmer, possibly six to 10,000 years ago at a minimum. If it sounds improbable that an ancient map could survive this time frame, it should be remembered many documents have survived thousands of years and some ancient maps are carved in stone, making them practically eternal. In addition to this, I'll note that Europeans made many discoveries of islands and landforms by using accurate source maps of unknown origin. It is accepted that accurate maps of unknown origin do exist. In regards to the appearance of Phineas's Great Southern Continent, it certainly resembles Antarctica. The map is drawn on a double cordiform projection which is not easy to investigate comparatively. So on a previous video, I've digitized the map, geo-referenced it and presented it for analysis on an azimuthal equidistant projection along with a radar sat image of Antarctica on the same projection. I've discussed the similarity between Antarctica and Phineas's southern continent in a previous video, so I'll quickly recap, then move on to the geospatial translation. Remembering, this resemblance is either coincidence or the history of civilization is fundamentally flawed. Both shapes are generally broken into a large and small landmass, East and West Antarctica. The comparison will start at the bottom of the screen at the 90 degree bend. In both an accurate map of Antarctica and Phineas's map, this point is at the end of a large mountain range. Heading counterclockwise in a sweeping left-hand arc, a quarter of the distance along the arc is a large indent, the Amory Ice Shelf. This is in proportion to the largest indent on the Phineas map. This ends at a 45 degree left-hand direction change called Enderby Land. This continues to a large north-south bay called Atka Bay. This bay is highly stylized on Phineas's map, as long with the surrounding area corresponding to Queen Maud Land. The mathematical analysis next will reconcile the distance difference to Enderby Land. This continues to a 45 degree left-hand bend into a sea housing the Rhone Ice Shelf, with a coast broken into thirds with a central third a convex arc. This continues to the smaller landmass West Antarctica, although there is no Palmer Peninsula. Again, I'll discuss this next. Then this continues into another bay. This bay's west hand coast is proportionally divided by a protruding landform with a small island generally north of this point. I would be surprised if there was another island on the planet that matched that similarity, but I'll reiterate, the orthodox narrative provides no explanation for this. So Phineas didn't have to show a southern continent at all. If it was invented, he could have very well left it blank or shown a thousand islands. But of all the infinite number of arbitrary shapes Phineas could have chosen, he chose this one apparently at random. 
Again, it's either coincidence or human history fundamentally flawed. There are, however, two important differences between Phineas's southern continent and Antarctica to address first. This will lead into part two, the hypothesis, then the proof. Firstly, the Palmer Peninsula. It appears absent on Phineas's map. There is a chance this is due to a confused map projection. If several source maps were on different projections, and for example, an equidistant projection had been confused with a projection that increased plan distance proportionally to longitude, it would actually mathematically explain the difference. This is very similar to the theory of Piri Rees's map, having both cylindrical and azimuthal properties I discussed in a previous video. However, I would need an intermediate map to prove this as a hypothesis, so it's just a possibility. Actually, a much more likely scenario is the map was damaged. And again, this is similar to Piri Rees's problem of using thousand year old source maps that are barely legible. Secondly, Phineas's southern continent is too large. It extends at one point nearly to the tropics. This can be explained by historic research and has been described in detail by Doug Fisher, both in the article on the Graham Hancock website and his book, Maps, Myth and Paradigms, which investigates many other anomalies into orthodox history and science. The link to both is in the description. I won't retell the entire investigation, but rather just several features of the hypothesis that are important to understand the prediction. Doug's research found several potential situations of confusion between contemporary discovery and accurate source maps that would explain the scale difference. For example, other maps of between 1500 and 1550 also show a large southern continent with a distinct north-south bay adjacent to the Straits of Magellan. Just prior to these maps being published, Magellan had sailed through South America to find the route to the Spice Isles and discovered the Straits, now named after him. Within the Straits of Magellan, he describes a large bay, now called Inatil Bay. It was explored as a potential route when it was discovered to be a bay, the expedition continued. Although the bay is clearly described as being east-west in direction, it is continued to be drawn north-south in direction on these maps. Doug's theory appears to be that an accurate source map of Antarctica was available to these cartographers and it showed the north-south facing Atka Bay, but it could not be positioned on the Earth correctly because it couldn't be reconciled with any known geographic location. The large north-south facing bay of Atka Bay on the source map was therefore scaled up to the latitude of the newly discovered east-west bay in Atil Bay and remained north-south in direction at the furthest discovered land in South America. This means Phineas's map is a combination of a world map of contemporary discovery and an ancient source map of Antarctica. So the southern continent on Phineas's map looks much more like Antarctica at the Strait of Magellan than the description of the discovery of the strait. This would have been the best a cartographer could do with an accurate source map in the 1500s. And again, I'm butchering the article for brevity, so please check it out. If we assume this correct and Atka Bay has been confused with Inatil Bay, then Phineas's southern continent needs to be scaled down by this amount, that is, from Inatil to Atka. If this is undertaken, the problem of scale is almost entirely resolved. This is the theory I wanted to make a falsifiable test for. But before I do, I will note Doug has found a second point of possible confusion between an accurate source map and exploration of the era. After Magellan sailed through his strait, he headed northwest into the Pacific Ocean. Not having a method of calculating longitude, he grossly underestimated the size of the Pacific Ocean and his crew ran low on food, they ate sawdust and bootstraps, and many eventually died of starvation. During this nightmare, they stumbled across two islands. Their hopes were crushed when the islands provided almost nothing in the way of food and water. They were later named the Unfortunate Islands. The islands are generally north-south in direction above the yet to be discovered West Antarctica. But the islands are not drawn in the north-south direction on Mercator's map of 1538. This is a contemporary map of an era and the similarity of this map with Phineas's map would support the theory that they utilize similar source data. So why would Mercator position the recently discovered north-south islands off the coast of an undiscovered continent in an east-west position? The theory is that if there was an accurate map of Antarctica and it showed two east-west islands at this point on West Antarctica, the cartographer may have used the north-south facing unfortunate islands 
as the position to scale the east-west islands off the coast of Antarctica too. For this theory to be credible, there would need to be two east-west islands off the coast of Antarctica, and it turns out there are, Kearney and Sipple. Again, the theme is identical to Atka Bay. The Great Southern Continent is displaying geographic locations as they exist on Antarctica, not as they were discovered in the real world. Other maps of the era, such as Johannes Schoner's map, also show this similarity, which means the cartographers have selected to weight the accurate source map over the explorer's actual maps and journals. When scaling and rotating for these two points of confusion, it should be noted there is a slight difference between the amount of scale of East and West Antarctica between Makeda's map and Phineas's map. It appears Makeda has drawn the unfortunate islands off the coast of West Antarctica and Phineas has scaled his coastline of West Antarctica up about 10 degrees to the island's position on Makeda's map. So the scale between East and West Antarctica is slightly different between these contemporary maps, about 15 to 20%. The cartographers may have been trying to reconcile the geospatial puzzle by using similar but different translations. It is important to note that both of these maps almost certainly shared source data with Shona, who also shows the southern continent in similar fashion in the same era. His first map of the Strait of Magellan was possibly the first to show the North-South Bay rather than the East-West Bay as Magellan described. A comparison of the three maps shows the similar features. Shona is in yellow, Phineas in blue, overlaid on Makeda's map. Asia is at the top of the page, Africa at the bottom left, South America at the bottom right. Atka Bay is between the southern continent and South America and the unfortunate islands are in the top right corner. All the maps show this southern continent. The only point they all keep fixed is this island of Zanzibar, and it's important. Why would they keep the differential longitude consistent between Atka Bay and Zanzibar? If Doug's theory is correct, and these cartographers all had access to an accurate source map, but chose different methods of reconciling the map of Antarctica with known discovery, then we would be able to reverse engineer all the translations using a single point of confusion. If Zanzibar is the only landmass held fix, then it's almost certainly here. Since the theory is that the original map was longitudinally accurate, the only point of investigation required is at Zanzibar, and the only translation possible will be the one that creates the best fit with an accurate map of Antarctica. For example, it is clear in a comparison of Phineas's map with Antarctica that if the 45 degree direction change at Zanzibar was shifted to the 45 degree direction change at Enderby Land, there would be a high level of similarity between Phineas's map and an accurate map of Antarctica. Please check the blog for the GIS translation. Here I'll demonstrate in CAD by creating a polyline, scaling and rotating and reinserting the stylization. As can be seen, if this translation could be proven, the ensuing similarity is well outside of coincidence. Even the Amory Ice Shelf aligns itself almost perfectly. However, the proof of this point of confusion would need to work for all three maps discussed. Shona, Phineas, Makeda. I'll start with the possible confusion that Shona has made that could account for the translation from Enderby to Zanzibar, then similarly for Phineas's map, and finally this will lead to the prediction and the proof that is hidden in Makeda's map. And moving a section of map longitudinally as discussed may seem like a stretch, but in reality this was a very common type of map manipulation before the advent of longitudinal measurement. Without longitudinal measurement, distances around the Earth were unable to be measured, so maps were frequently stretched and shrunk longitudinally as new data was acquired. I'll use Doug's diagram for Shona's map as it's hard to get a quality image of the bottom of a 500 year old globe. In the same theme as Atka Bay and Unfortunate Islands, we're looking for a point of confusion between an accurate map of Antarctica and a contemporary discovery that could explain the scale and rotation, and this would be the last piece of the puzzle. There are islands on Shona's globe at the point we're investigating as Enderby Land. 
So it would follow, if this was a point of confusion, there may be an island recently discovered at the tropics at this geographic coordinate in the real world, and an island off Antarctica's Enderby land. Therefore, the island at the tropics were mistaken for the source map island off Antarctica, and this caused a confusion. The island would need to be off Madagascar and would need to be recently discovered just prior to Shona's map, but before it was fully mapped, otherwise the shape difference of the island would become apparent and the confusion revealed. It turns out both Mauritius and Reunion Island, just east of Madagascar, were discovered in 1507, just prior to Shona's 1524 map, but they weren't accurately mapped until much later in the 1590s, exactly in the location and the timeline we need. The second part of the puzzle would require an island off Enderby Land in Antarctica. There is an island at exactly the right location, this island is called White Island, and is in the required position to explain the scaling on Shona's map. Again, this isn't a proof, just a possibility. Shona's island at this point even more closely resembles the shape of White Island than it does Reunion Island. So if true, Shona has kept the shape of the island off Antarctica in the source map over the description of the newly discovered Reunion Island in the tropics. So this could explain the shift to the tropics by Shona. So far, so good. The theory holds true for Phineas's map of 1531 as well. And as we've seen, if Phineas used this translation, moving the 45 degree direction change at Zanzibar to Enderby land, it creates an amazing geospatially similar shape. A problem, however, is why didn't Phineas use the exact same shape of White Island? His island is much more triangular, similar to Makeda's. A possible solution is that if when Antarctica was mapped and the continent's coast was ice-free, another island would be revealed under the melted ice in a triangular shape similar to Phineas's Zanzibar. This sounds like a long shot, but by removing the glacial ice from a digital elevation model, we can see there would be another island at Enderby Land. It's in the correct location for the scale hypothesis to work and is very similar in shape to Phineas's Zanzibar. But this of course means the theory is growing in complexity. Zanzibar also means black coast. Reunion Island has a black coast, so it makes sense to scale to this point if the source island had a black coast, but we may never know as the island is under sea ice. Also, if anyone has tried to source raw data from Antarctica, you'll know it's incredibly secretive and they don't part with the data very easily. And if this process DEM is all I have, I can't really test it. For this reason, I wanted to push on for a better, more universal proof, something that would work with or without the ice-free island off Enderby for all three maps. This is because it still doesn't explain Makeda's map. That is, why did Makeda only scale Enderby land to south 45 degrees and not to the tropics as Phineas and Shona did? Why did he not place Zanzibar directly off the coast, which explains the White Island Reunion Island confusion? The only explanation is that Makeda has chosen another island as the point of translation, while still using White Island and Reunion Island. This means each cartographer has translated the accurate source map with slightly different methods, and I'll explain this diagrammatically. If Shona confused White Island with Reunion Island, it would explain Shona's translation and fit into our Antarctica hypothesis. If Phineas made the same confusion, it would create the map we have been discussed that aligns almost perfectly with Antarctica. However, he had used the shape of another triangular island. But for Makeda, the translation is more complex and it can be used to make a highly unlikely prediction. For the three-way translation confusion to work, there must be another island, triangular in shape at a very specific location in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Makeda therefore knew of the island off Antarctica at Enderby Land and this other Indian Ocean Island. He confused White Island with this new island in the Indian Ocean and the Indian Ocean Island with Reunion Island. Consider the odds of this prediction being satisfied. These are the spatial requirements to satisfy the question of why the three cartographers use different translations and prove the existence of the ancient source map. Makeda shows the island 15 to 20 degrees north of his southern continent. So to make the math work, the island we are looking for in the Indian Ocean must be differentially 15 to 20 degrees north of Antarctica. It must be triangular to account for the shape of Makeda's Zanzibar. 
It must also be at the latitude of the proposed Enderby land on Makeda's Great Southern Continent. That is south 45 to 50 degrees, explaining why Makeda scaled Enderby land to this point. This is the translation confusion of White Island. But if this is true, Makeda has decided then not to draw the small White Island and only draw the second Indian Ocean island that he has used to scale. So if Makeda knew of an island at this point, but didn't draw it, he must show it at this very point on other maps later in his career, so we can verify he did indeed know of an island's existence at this exact location. The island would also need to have a black coast to warrant the name Zanzibar and the confusion with Reunion Island. As Zanzibar is the only point that has common longitudinal difference from the Strait of Magellan on all three maps, and our hypothesis is that these maps were mapped by an advanced civilization who had developed advanced methods of measurement and longitudinally accurate maps, it would also need to be 140 degrees east of the Strait of Magellan, which is our original Phineas Southern Continent at Cabay scale point. It also needs to be undiscovered in 1530. Consider this the mathematical prediction to satisfy Fisher's Antarctica hypothesis and its likelihood to coincidence. Because if this isn't coincidence, it places a giant question mark over our civilization's entire history. So is there an island that is 15 to 20 degrees north of Antarctica, that is triangular in shape similar to Makeda Zanzibar, at south 45, 50 degrees latitude, that is shown on later Makeda maps, that has a black coastline that is 140 degrees east of the Strait of Magellan and was undiscovered in 1530. There is. In the middle of the Antarctic Indian Ocean, at exactly the required position, Kerguelen Island or French Southern Antarctic lands. Differentially correct from Antarctica, latitudinally correct on Makeda's map, triangular in shape, similar to Makeda Zanzibar, Longitudinally correct on all three cartographers' southern continent world maps, it is shown on many later maps of Makeda and contemporary cartographers, it has a black coastline, it was undiscovered at the time of this map and for at least 200 years after its publication. This is quite the geospatial prediction to be satisfied. It also works with the ice-free uncovered island. The additional step still fits into the formula and in fact the only change we would expect is that if Phineas and Makeda use different triangular islands on accurate source maps, we would expect to find Phineas' Zanzibar look more like the ice-free island off Enderby land, while Makeda's Zanzibar would look more like Kerguelen Islands. And what we see is exactly what we would expect, but it's of little consequence. The math still works either way. The evidence is even reinforced when the history of Kerguelen Island is investigated. The island was discovered by Kerguelen using an ancient map of the undiscovered island. He sailed straight to it. It also turned out the ancient map that he used was found to show the island longitudinally accurate, even though no method of measuring longitude had been discovered at the time. Kerguelen discovered the island that proves the Antarctic hypothesis by literally following a longitudinally accurate map of the Indian Antarctic Ocean this sounds like a dictionary definition of a rediscovery. Kerguelen Islands are the geospatial proof that Phineas's map of 1531 is based on an accurate source map. And accurate source maps are the mathematical remnant of an advanced civilization of the remote past. And our history is fundamentally flawed. Kerguelen Island also has its secrets. It was found to have a giant archway that resembled many myths of the gateway to the gods, but it was destroyed almost immediately after its discovery. Its mythological link to Antarctica is even stranger. Please subscribe to the channel to see more on the Kerguelen Antarctica hypothesis, the next map analysis, and megalithic investigations. Till then.